Cause me. Oh God, it's the best show. It's the best show ever. One, cause you get to see the crime solved, unlike the real news. <laughs> and then on top of that, it's never the black guy. <laughs> it's wonderful. First they accuse the black man. And then they call take backs. I don't know what it is legally. Backsies, whatever the fuck. <laughs> they do that. <laughs> There's some exceptions to the rule. Sometimes it's the African guy with the kufi on and the dashiki and all that. One time, it's ludicrous twice. <laughs> but aside from that, I've seen this at least 17 times. A chick comes in the squad room and she's like, oh my God, I've been attacked. And they're like, who do you think it was? I think it was Tyrone from my job. <laughs> He used to ask me what's good, and I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. And then they catch Tyrone's stupid ass before they even get to the clarinet solo in the credits. <laughs> and the detective's putting the screws to him like, hey, let me guess what happened, Tyrone. You're out chilling with your dogs. <laughs> Getting it in. <laughs> Getting your swerve on, perhaps. Then you did it. You did it, Tyrone. And Tyrone's is like crying and shit. He's like, it wasn't me, man. It's no possible way it was me, man. I owe Sally May $7,000, nigga. It was not me. <laughs> because black people like to use bills as a defense mechanism. <laughs> Just a tip for your white futures. Happy Black History Month. This is my gift <laughs> to you. <laughs> it is, it's one of the greater fringe benefits to being black. Just bringing up bills to get out of doing shit you don't feel like doing. I haven't gone swimming in 17 years. You feel me? <laughs> Oh, Greg, you want to go kayaking? You know how much money I owe Sprint? Get the fuck off my phone! You just hang up on Greg, and he'll never bring it up again. <laughs> so then Tyrone executes that maneuver, and, and then the captain busts in, and he's like, hey, we got to cut Tyrone loose. Turns out, it was another creepy white guy with glasses. <laughs> and then they take 42 minutes, three commercial breaks, and merrily find his ass. It's fantastic. <laughs> but I watch it all the time. Like, all the time. <laughs> and it's starting to affect the rest of my life besides the couch. I've become too accustomed to seeing excellent cop work. <laughs> okay, follow me here. Uh, cops on TV are the best. <laughs> cops in the real world are not necessarily held <laughs> to the same standards. If you could see what I'm doing with my hand, it was not in the same location as when the joke started. Okay, so you know, if you don't believe me, uh, uh, census to the audience. Uh, clap if you've been robbed before. It's fine. <laughs> Continue clapping your hands if you got your shit back. <laughs> Y'all are thugs. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But for the rest of us, it's not how it works. The cops on TV, they're definitely getting your, your shit back. And plus, on top of that, the shit will still work. And then on top of that, they're solving a cold case from 50 years ago with a thumbprint <laughs> off your Razor scooter or whatever they took from you. I don't know what they took from you, man, but they're getting two for one every time out of the gate. And that's it's wild to see. I'm not a criminal or nothing, but you know, I like to have a few. When I hit the grocery store, I like to have a few grapes. You know what I'm saying? Like that. <laughs> that's just my fee for me even walking into Shopper's Foods. I could have went anywhere. Hit the hot bar up. I want one chicken tender. I'm not weighing that. I'm not putting a sticker on that. I'm eating it. And then I'm paying for my cereal. And the only reason I'm paying for the cereal is because you can't walk around a grocery store and eat cereal. That is barbaric. I'm starting to get nervous to do this shit. Like, what if they get my DNA off the sneeze guards? then run it with the tape, then cross-reference it with the data. Sir, you know they got the data! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little... You know, guys, I've been black a long time, and I... <laughs> if you're wondering how it is, it's all right. It's very maso menos these days, no big deal. <laughs> you, know, hey, you, know what, you know what bugs me about being black now? It's just, I don't, like, I don't like it when white people are overtly nice to me. I don't like this... <laughs> This white guilt business is ridiculous. What is there to be guilty about? You guys won the whole earth. Why be sad? You did it. You won. <laughs> enjoy it. You don't have to keep starting these nonprofits, guys. Just enjoy, <laughs> enjoy your free time. 
I just don't. <laughs> Coupled with that, I, feel, I finally figured out how to offend white people. You can't call them honky or cracker. Like, that's just adorable. <laughs> Those are adorable names for fucking beanie babies. I seen honky the koala at the McDonald's. It's unisex. <laughs> you know what really offends white people now? Call them racist. <laughs> I didn't even finish the joke. I didn't even tell a joke yet. You're gasping. <laughs> Don't do that. See what I'm talking about? Don't do that. Just, just be white and be happy. Enjoy your victory. And quit asking me fucking questions. That's what I'm getting at. I was at a thing, okay, and a good friend of mine comes up to me, and he's like, hey, Jamel, I need to ask you a question. And yeah, it's going to be racist. <laughs> Which is a great start to anything. I'm like, Where, well, yeah, you know, I was like, what do you got? What's up? He's like, it's summertime, important to the story. And he was like, uh, hey, you ever see those black guys on the metro? You know, they have towels on their shoulder. And I'm like, yeah, what about it? He's like, well, I was wondering if I would be racist if I wore a towel. <laughs> End quote. This was a serious question I got asked by an adult. We weren't even outside. We were in pub, like. <laughs> and all I could think when he asked me was like, my, how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like once upon a time, Black people weren't allowed to read books in this country. Now you're asking me for permission to wear a towel in public? <laughs> Excuse yourself. I'm like, dog, you'd just be hot too. But guess what? Since you asked, fuck no, you can't wear no towel. The towels are done. My towel, black towels. You got to know every Wu-Tang song ever recorded. You got to write an eight-page essay on who Redman is to even start the paperwork on some fucking towels. Okay, I think we're all best friends, so I'm going to open up to you guys now. Um, <laughs> this next one is the tale of the day I found out I was fat. <laughs> I was a young lad at the time, about 18 years of age, and uh, living at my parents' house, got a curfew. I'm at a house party, getting my swerve on. <laughs> curfew time comes, it's time to go home. I want to go back to the party. So I discuss this with the driver. I say, hey, driver. Going to go in, coming right back out. We don't got ADT, none of that. And we're going to go right back to the party. Drunk driving, soldier boy. <laughs> <laughs> and so the plan's in effect. And uh, I was wearing all black at the time, and my parents live in, like, around some woods. It was a little wooded glen. <laughs> and uh, I come jogging out of the back of the house, and then my friend drives off. <laughs> I had to chase him down the street. I finally catch up to him. I'm like, yo, what the fuck was that? And he looks me in my eyes, and he's like, dude, I thought you were a bear. <laughs> and you know, yeah, it hurt my feelings. I was hurt then. I was hurt. But you know, I got on Live Journal. I dealt with it. I'm fine. I'm fine. Fine now. Okay, guys, so uh, this is going to be a great show before I get out of here. It's going to be a fantastic show. You picked a great show to come to. Oh, my goodness. Just remember that I was on this motherfucker. <laughs> I was here, too. My name is Jamel Johnson. For the white folks here, you can call me Jamal once. You get a one Jamal token. <laughs> Play it wisely. If you know how to say it already, don't come up to me with that cute shit. Hey, good stuff, Jamel. Like, no, man. Just say I'm right and find me. I just I mentioned the name so you come find me on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my email is babytelemundo at gmail.com. That's real. Uh, I'm still on Black Planet, you know. Got the Netscape. I asked Jeeves some shit last night. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do. But if you find me, just do me the solid and don't hijack my status. Okay? Fuck that. Here's the hijack status. Here's the hijack status, all right? Let's say I put up something like, hey, performing at the improv tonight, y'all, whoop de whoop <laughs> Then person A goes, oh, man, Jamel, that's so awesome. Then person B goes, hey, person A, how you been? <laughs> What's going on with you, player? <laughs> oh, person B, you know I'm chilling. And then these jerk-offs have a 48 notification conversation on your wall. <laughs> 
with your bandwidth, with your Wi-Fi's that you're either paying for or you're standing in front of Panera. I don't know. I don't know. But that's your real estate. How dare they? You come home and finally check your shit because you don't got a real cell phone or nothing. And you're like, ooh, 48 noties, I'm that man. <laughs> Turns out these niggas is going to Cancun without you. <laughs> all right, all right, you guys ready to get the show going? 